Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your warm reception. Thank you for your support for Scholarship America and for other programs that are doing so much to enable great young people like Kylie and Jesse to reach their full potential. Before I entered the Senate, I had the privilege of serving as a federal judge in my home state of Maine. What I enjoyed most about it was when I presided over what are called naturalization ceremonies, their citizenship ceremonies. A group of people who'd come from all over the world, had gone through the required procedures, gathered before me in a federal courtroom and there, by the power vested in me under our Constitution and law, I administered to them the oath of allegiance to the United States, and I made them Americans. It was always a very emotional ceremony for me because, as you heard earlier, my parents were immigrants. My mother could not read or write. She spent her entire life working the night shift in textile mills. My father was a janitor at a local school for much of his life. But because of their efforts, and more importantly, because of the openness of American society, I was able to receive an education and to go on to become the majority leader of the United States Senate. After each such ceremony, I made it a point to speak personally with each of the new Americans, individually or in family groups. I asked them where they came from, how and why they came. Their stories were as different as their countries of origin, all inspiring, and through them ran some common themes best summarized by a young Asian man who, when I asked why he came, replied in very slow and halting English, I came, he said, because in America, everybody has a chance. Think about the fact that a young man who'd been an American for less than 10 minutes, who could barely speak English, was able to sum up the meaning of our country. America is freedom and opportunity. But we all know that while we have opportunity, Equal opportunity remains an aspiration. In urban centers all around this country, including the very city in which we now meet, in rural, impoverished areas with declining populations, there are young Americans who won't have the same chance I had or that many of you here had. Equal opportunity remains an aspiration. And the great challenge that our society faces is to lift our actions to the level of our aspirations and make opportunity real for every single person in our society. It must begin with a recognition that the historical standard of education being when you begin either kindergarten or preschool and finishes when you get out of college, is outmoded. Education must be a lifelong enterprise in the 21st century. And the economics dictate that it has to be available to everyone. Through the ups and downs of a dynamic free market economy, unemployment levels move in lockstep. For those who didn't graduate from high school, the unemployment rate is twice as high as those who did graduate from high school. And for those who graduated from high school, it's twice as high than for those who graduated from college. And those numbers move in lopstep. Two, four, and eight in good times. Five, 10, and 20 in bad times, and we have to make possible the opportunity to rise to the highest level for everyone. I was 16 years old 
when I entered the, my senior year of the public high school in a small town in Maine in which I grew up. On almost the very first day, my father lost his job. He had left school at the age of 10, had worked without interruption for all of his life until then, so the fear and reality of unemployment destroyed his self-esteem and nearly his life. I made no preparation for college because there was no possibility of that. And like many of my classmates, I prepared to take a job in the local paper mill where there was what seemed at the time to be a good guaranteed job. In the spring, I received a telephone call from a man I didn't know. A local business official, he asked me to come in and see him. I wondered what it was about, and when I got there, I learned all he wanted to do was help me. He asked me, what are you doing about college? I said, nothing. He said, do you know my father's out of work? and we don't have any money. He said, well, I've made an appointment for you with the director of admissions at Bowdoin College next week. And I said to him, it's not possible for me to go to Bowdoin. He said, well, you have an appointment with the director of admissions next week, and I'd like you to go. I've sent all of your transcripts down to him. So the next week, I got up early one morning. My parents didn't own a car. My mother made a couple of sandwiches, put them in a brown paper bag, and I went out to the highway to hitchhike to Brunswick, where Bowdoin is located. I knew I was off to a good start when the first car that came by stopped. <laughs> and after the driver heard my story, he took me right to the campus, so I arrived five hours early. <laughs> I walked the entire campus, memorizing the name and location of every building. And when I got into the meeting with the director of admissions, an elderly, kind, distinguished gentleman confronting literally and figuratively a nobody, he treated me as an equal. He said, I know all about your background. I know all about your family. He said, I have one, qu one question for you. Are you willing to work? I said, yes. He said, then you're admitted to Bowdoin and we'll help you find work. And I worked at a variety of jobs, the equivalent of full time, but I got my way through Bowdoin and that changed my life. 30 or 40 years later, in a way that no one could predict the mysterious ways of human life, I found myself in the United States Senate. I was invited to a conference at the University of Maine, the subject of which was the aspirations of Maine youth. It was a depressing conference because the aspirations were very low, particularly in the poorer rural areas. The man who organized the conference asked me to get up and just tell my life story. He said, because if the kids hear from someone who's from the same background, maybe they'll be inspired. And I gave the talk, and afterwards, several local education officials asked me to come to their high schools. And thus began a process in which I spoke at the graduation at every single one of Maine's then approximately 145 high schools. It took me 12 years, because they all graduate over a couple of weekends in June, <laughs> and a lot of traveling. But during those weekends spent at high schools, I met thousands of Maine youngsters, just like these two great youngsters here. And over and over again, I saw in their eyes and heard in their words the same fear, insecurity, uncertainty, without purpose or direction in life, but I also felt that inside each of them there was a spark just waiting to be lit. And I knew I had found my mission in life. So that when I left the Senate, I created this program where we give out a one scholarship every year to a graduate from every 
public high school in Maine. And I can tell you it's the most gratifying feeling in the world for me to meet with all of these kids each August at the University of Maine before they go on to college. And we have to make it possible for all to do that. Now, I set for myself a goal that I know is impossible to attain. My goal is to see to it that every single child in Maine has the same chance in life that I did. I know it's not mathematically possible, but if we set high, impossible goals and work as best we can to come as close as we can to attain them, think about how much good that we can do. Genius is found wherever there are human beings. Genius knows no race, no religion, no language, no color. It can exist in any human being. And the challenge of any society, including and especially our own, is to light that spark in as many, many of our young people as we can. We are so fortunate to be Americans citizens of a society which, despite our many serious imperfections daily on display, remains, in my judgment, still the most open, the most just, the most free society in all of human history. We have to make it better, and we can make it better, if you think about the contributions that can come from young people like these and the many others that have been on the stage tonight and the many others being helped by so many of you. So for what you're doing, thank you and God bless you. And for recognizing our small program, thank you again so very much. Congratulations to Kai and Jesse.